Okay, this demonstration is for the oil pastel project for drawing one. Um, in this project, um, like the way that I do a lot of my classes, I always like to give you guys a good overall experience of different mediums, um, you know, that are, are considered a, a drawing medium. Medium is just what it's made out of. Um, so a value or like a pencil drawing is the, the medium is pencil, uh, a chalk pastel project would be chalk um, and stuff like that. So oil pastel are, here's a couple um, brands. This is Portfolio, no, it's Crepaz, Expressionist, and uh, Pentel is another one. Um, they come in different sizes. This one is um, much thicker um, than this one. Um, you will use your pencil sharpener on here because one side is for a pencil, the other one's for like a thicker pencil, or we use it for our oil pastels. Downside is when I buy these large ones, um, they they still fit, um, but just barely. I think the portfolios, yeah. So the portfolio series, which is a little bit of a higher quality, do not fit in there. Um, but these, these expressionists do, thank goodness. Um, Otherwise, portfolio ones, while they are kind of a little bit of higher quality, they just don't fit in. Um, so I don't buy them as much anymore. Um, otherwise, you know, Pentel is, is still a good brand as well. And you'll have to kind of peel back on this. A lot of times when people feel oil pastel, they're reminded of a crayon. Um, the crayon is a wax-based um, product and oil pastel is, is an oil-based product, okay? So <clears throat> when I, first time I used oil pastel, I hated it. Um, I learned it in college. We did all these color theory things that were just boring as all get out and I just never, never liked it. And then until I started teaching, um, it was actually over at our grant a long time ago uh, when I used to teach over there. Um, I had a student that, that did a, a piece and it was, it was, it was, she did an amazing job and, and then, and then I got into it and it actually became one of my favorite mediums uh, to draw on. And I, out of all this stuff, you know, maybe not pencil so much, just if I think about how far back, um, but oil pastel, I've done a lot of pieces with oil pastel. Okay, so I hope you're excited about this one. Um, you do have the um, uh, the documents on online. You can you you'll be able to kind of look at, and you will bring that into into Cami, um, and you'll you'll be able to edit that if you are. Um, if you don't have access to the printed copy of this, um, if you want to print it off and do it that way, that, that's fine too, uh, whatever kind of works for it. So it says, sketch out two ideas for this project. It talks about non-objective versus objective. So a non-objective idea, and use pencil. I'm using Sharpie so you can see better. Um, a non-objective idea is where, let's say for instance, this is my paper. Your paper is going to be 16 by 20 inches. Um, so this is kind of, that's kind of about it, is that you would work with geometric shapes. So here's kind of a half circle, you know, here is a line, here is a line, there is a line, there's another circle. There's one, there's some, this is not a very good design. <laughs> um, there's a shape right there. It looks like a lightning bolt. Is it just talks about shapes and it, it talks about the appreciation of shapes. There's not a meaning behind it. Um, but with any good art, there are principles that you've learned in middle school called principles of design. And one of them is a focal point. If you end up doing a non-objective piece, um, and I have examples up here, um, you want to be able to get the viewer to look in one spot. So everything kind of coalesce around something or thing or the, your lines just kind of <clears throat> have a way of pointing towards you know a certain part on there where there's going to be up here it's going to be over here and you can do that with shapes and you can do that with colors you know if the whole thing was warm colors like your yellows um your reds <coughs> excuse me your yellows your reds your um yellow red and orange um and then all of a sudden you have a blue circle in there your eyes are going to go to that blue circle Okay, so that becomes a focal point uh, because it's so unique. So this is one idea. And you can kind of, I just want you to sketch something out. If this is the one you end up going with, you might want to do a couple other sketches on a scrap sheet of paper to figure out what you want to do. The objective idea, this is where you can just list it. So I have some things down here. These are all objective. And I say cartoon or like video game or app game characters. Um, 
And I would kind of encourage that. If you want to do something a little bit different, that's fine. Uh, but it's something that you want to be able to outline in black when you're done with it because that outline makes your colors pop and they look really, really cool when you get done with it. Um, so we, we kind of go over that in your, in your demonstration. So like here, I have like the Lion King. I got uh, Goofy, something from Donkey Kong. Um, this is from w Wind Waker. I think so for or Zelda, um, PJ Masks. If you're if you're into them at all, um, what you are looking for in, in all these is that they do have values, where they go from, um, you know, from a light color to a darker color. It's just not black here, red here, orange here. If you find something like that, I'm going to say you need to find something different, because then I can't give you the A that you probably deserve. So don't worry about that so much for right now, but just list. Um, objective ideas. Um, so, <clears throat> um, so you can start putting some of these down. So you can think of your Disney. So I can just write down Disney, um, but come up with something a little more specific. Um, like I just, I mean, and I could find artwork for it, but I, I'm, I'm kind of watching the Mandalorian series right now. Mandalorian. I cannot spell. Um, but you could have that, you know, I could put down Little Mermaid. Um, when you start doing artwork, take it from two perspectives. Um, either some artwork I want to make for myself or a piece of artwork I want to make for somebody else. Okay. Um, never do art for a grade. Uh, it, it just loses its, its spirit. Um, so while you might not be excited about oil pastel, then find a subject that you're really excited about. Um, and if you could say, well, I, I really don't want to do cartoons or game characters, that's fine. Um, you could type in... Um, like oil pastel flowers, um, if you're really into that. Or, I mean, you could find almost anything um, that has that some artists had done with it. Um, so just come up with, I would say, five or six ideas in here. Reflect on how non-objective artwork can still affect our emotions by comparing two different pieces together and write about it. Um, so what I would do on here is look up here. Um, so I have these pieces. Um, hopefully you can kind of figure out which ones are the objective, which ones are the non-objective. So again, non-objective is, is an appreciation for shapes and lines and colors. If you have a tree in there, it's no longer non-objective. It's objective because the object is a tree. So this is non-objective. These are um, little mannequins, wood mannequins. So those are objective. Again, non-objective, it's just a circle and square. Um, this teeters on it a little bit, but I see a sun here. I see um, mountains and hills. So this is objective, okay? Now you could argue, you know, well, this looks like um, like atoms and a nucleus and stuff like that. I mean, if you want to kind of go that route, you can. That's where art gets a little gray. You know, obviously this is Iron Man. So reflecting on these, you know, or, or, or whatever, and you should have a color copy online. Um, if you look at that, you can, the colors help out a lot, a lot more with emotions. Um, reflect on these, so, and come up with like three sentences. So reflect on how non-objective artwork, like this, affect our emotions by comparing two different pieces together and writing about them. So it says, look at this one, look at this one, and how is our emotion affected by these, okay? Because non-objective can really play around with your emotions. It can make you happy. It can make you sad. Um, and why? Why does it? And come up with three sentences. Okay. Next part. I'm going to switch over to another one because I got all this marker on here. Next thing. <clears throat> Designing artwork for different parts of a personal space. So I will... Use that. Um, go in. I'm gonna use a different sharpie. Maybe this one will still show up. Um, so one thing I want you to consider is a lot of times we make artwork, um, and then we find a place at our house or our apartment of where it's gonna go. Um, we are gonna do a reversal of that because one of the things that um, as artists I want you to kind of think about a little bit is thinking of the space first, and then what art would go inside of it. So. As artists and designers, sometimes we have to do a reversal thinking. 
For example, we are so used to making our work and taking it home and then trying to figure out where to display it. <clears throat> Let's do the opposite. Think of each of these rooms and come up with an idea or two of what you could make what you could make for it. So you have your bedroom, kitchen, you know, brother or sister's room. Um, you don't have to fill all these out because it says fill eight of the 12. Um, so I got nine here, 10, 11, 12. So you only have to fill eight of these out. So if you don't have a brother or sister, obviously you would just cross that one out. Bathroom, hopefully you have one of those. Um, living room, dining room, hallway, um, laundry room, you know, TV, TV room. And if you have a room that's not listed on here, I mean, you could cross that off and put something, I don't know what you'd have. Uh, maybe you have a sauna. Um, you could, which would be cool. Um, you could put that down. Um, or are you going to gift it? Okay. <clears throat> so that's where I'm thinking, um, you know, do you have a brother or sister that's going off to college um, next year? Or do you have an aunt that loves elephants um, or stuff like that? <clears throat> so, Kitchen, um, think of a kitchen. What would be what would be an idea? What could you find? What could you do an oil pastel of that would fit in the kitchen? And so this gets away a little bit of the character idea, and gets into just a different way of thinking about it. And that's fine. Okay, it doesn't have to be a character. It's just an idea. So kitchen. Yep, you probably already said it. Maybe I could find some sort of a um, bowl of fruit. Um, living room, uh, I have no idea. Um, bathroom, um, maybe like something from uh, a seashore. I said sea, seashore. <laughs> I got me thinking about um, uh, Sally. S Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Uh, something like that. Um, so something like that might be kind of fun. Or if, maybe if you have like on your shower curtain, you have like... Um, Oh, or the seahorses, you know? So everybody's different on here. <clears throat> you can come up with one idea or you can come up with two. Um, and then gifting, I'm going to say brother. Um, and then I'm going to say the Minnesota Gophers. And you can come up with something else. So this is thinking about the end result prior to starting the project. Okay, so get that done. Um, once you have completed this um, packet, um, you will have, um, you'll, you'll have access to a Google um, slideshow and you'll find a slide on there, put your name on it, you put three ideas down on there, um, and then you'll write a little thing about which one is your favorite idea, your second, your third idea. Um, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna kind of decide, um, is this something that this person could get an A on? Um, or something. So I want to have a little bit of say what you do, mainly because I want to make sure you do good on the project. Okay, so let's look at this last part. This is the rubric. Um, so after, so you don't turn the sheet in until you're done with the project. Okay, I know I'm still going to have some of you that are going to turn this in right when you get the drawings done. But it says written answers. Um, five points, self-grade. Um, so out of five points, if you did everything on here, you give yourself five points. If you did not do everything on here, go back and do everything on there, okay? And give yourself five points. So we can say that I got five points there. Drawing samples complete, you know, that's what this is. If this is all done, it's like, gosh, I did a great job on that. Give yourself five points. Um, so five plus five is 10, so you add that on. This is what I'm grading on. Um, so successfully blend one oil pastel into another to create a gradient. That's 20 points, which means it's 40% of your project. That means it's 40% of your project. That's almost half. That is why when you select something that you wanna do, um, I wanna make sure that it does go from like a dark orange to a light orange to a yellow to a light orange to a dark orange to a red, that it has that. Because if you don't have that, you either have to come up with it or lose 40% of your grade, okay? So it has to have those transitions. So if you have something like The Simpsons, you have Bart Simpson, you could find artwork that somebody's done on him that has those grades, but most of his stuff, most of Patrick is pink, okay? And then you would have a purple and you'd have a light purple. There's no gradients, 
Okay, so you've got to find something that has it. Keep crisp lines and have strong contrast in colors, black outline. So you need that black outline on there. And the reason why we practice it is because I do expect you to have that on your actual project, because again, that's 10 points or 20% of your grade. Control the oil pastel and keep it clean, which means if it's a mess, you lose those five points. Add all that up, put on there. Um, you put everything on our Sonia, um, which means that when I grade this, this should all be turned in, um, whether digitally or in person. Um, and I look at this, I'll pull up our Sonia, um, make sure it's there. Um, if you need to have your stuff framed, if you're here, um, and then I then I make sure they get all that graded. Okay. Uh, so if this is done and say you got the whole thing done, um, I'll probably pull this sheet back up after I'm done with the project and go from there. Actually, we're gonna pretend. So let's say, yeah, I think I got 20 points here. Um, I think um, I did not do a, a good outline on anything, so I'm gonna give myself five points. I feel like it's a little messy, I'm gonna give myself three. So 25, 28, um, so I circled that, okay. Um, let's say our Sonia was all done, so two and three, um, so that's five. Now, final score, you just, you count these by two, because it's always out of like 100%. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So 100 minus 14 is 86%, sorry about that. Teacher, student score, 86%. This is what you think you should get, okay? And then I will give my score, which is, I usually put it here unless there's a deduction. Like if you don't grade it yourself, you lose 5%. Okay, so just make sure you get it done. Um, other than that, finish this all up, get this all done, um, find your three ideas, um, and then we will start chatting and figure out what you wanna do. Okay, thanks. So next is this. Um, so this is your practice um, that you'll do. So it's warm next to cool. So this is your yin-yang symbol. Um, on this area it says use reds and yellows to color the section. The circle inside it should be blues uh, with a white center. Outline in, in outline any line in thin black and blend it in. So when you draw your, your piece, wherever your line is, your pencil line is, eventually that will be a thin black line. Okay, so I wanna grab my reds. Um, I think that's a red. Um, I'm gonna grab those two and my yellows here. So I have a scrap sheet of paper. Well, that's definitely a red. And that is an orange. So you always wanna test it out. Whatever colors you end up using, I would keep in your toolbox for your project. You don't wanna to have to try to go back and find them again. So I have my red and my yellows, and obviously this is a yellow. Um, you do, if you do see that it is kind of dirty on here because the wrapper is off of here. And even when the wrapper is on, they, they do get more, even more dirty on here. So like looking at this white. The way you take care of that is you grab like a paper towel or a toilet paper, this is a napkin. It doesn't work as well, but I, I don't have any other ones. Um, is I'm just gonna take that and I'm just kind of doing my best job to gently, but I need to kind of press down um, inside of here um, to kind of get that oil um, pastel clean, okay? So that's how you do it. Grab a toilet paper, a Kleenex, um, go back and forth on that, and you'll have a nice clean piece. Okay, so I'm gonna take my red, and I'm gonna I'm gonna color this. When I color it, um, oil pastels are not known for their exact detail. Um, so if you are a very tight drawer, um, this will be a good project for you because it'll help you try to loosen up a little bit. Okay. It'll probably infuriate you, but it's good practice. So I'm going around the outside. Um, I'm going to go from a dark red um, to an orange to a yellow. So I know I want this area red for sure. That's what I'm kind of going in, but I know I'm going to sort of start transitioning into an orange. And I don't want to use orange because it doesn't say, it says use yellows. So now I'm going to kind of lightly go around the inside here. I want to hit this a little bit better. Now, this is very blunt. Um, I can take my um, uh, pencil sharpener 
uh, my pencil sharpener, and I can go over a trash bag, or if you have a little compartment in your toolbox you want to set aside, I'm just gonna use this cup. Um, I want to go in and I want to get a sharper piece. Now this paper is interfering with it a little bit. Rip that off. There we go. Much better. Because now I can get in here a little bit easier. Okay, go on this side. I'm going to turn my paper, because when I color and draw, I do like to move this around quite a bit, because your wrist has a natural bend in it, so use that to your advantage and go with your sides. Now I'm lightly putting down red, because I want to leave part of that paper exposed, because <clears throat> I'm going to be trying to get an orange in there when I do this. Excuse me. All okay. right, I'm gonna take my yellow. I do wanna kinda of keep it yellow around here. So I'm doing that hard, still kinda of doing it hard right here. And now I'm gonna start doing circle motions and I wanna get a nice orange where these two are gonna be hitting. So I'm going all the way up. When you work with oil pastels, I do not want to see any white of the paper showing when you are done. So if you, if you have an area that's white, use a white oil pastel, okay? Because it leaves kind of a sheen on it and it's, it's very distracting um, and kind of ruins a piece. If you have an area that's white, but you don't actually use the oil pastel on that. So now because I left those gaps, I mean, it's a lot easier for me to get these, to get these oranges. Um, if I didn't do that, it would be a lot harder and usually pretty noticeable. Again, I'm doing circles. Getting a little bit too much red on here. Um, I want to kind of clean this up a little bit. <clears throat> and so I can get a a better transition between the yellow and the orange. <clears throat> what I'm looking for when I grade this is, can I see where red becomes orange and orange becomes yellow? If I can see that, that's not good because that means you didn't go in. And what's, what I love about oil pastels is they are so fun to blend. Um, so if I see those breaks, I know you didn't go in and do your circles good enough. Okay. Center here, the inside should be blues with a white. Um, that's purple. It's not going to work. Um, this is a blue. I don't know if I want to use that one. It's kind of hard. This one's more creamy. I think I'm going to go with this one. And it says a white center. So I'm going to go on the outside here. So the thing with uh, yin and yang is that, you know, they one analogy. Um, so it's a symbol uh, for a, like an Eastern religion where like this is evil. Um, this shape right here would be good. Um, so again, this is evil. And the spot right here is good. So this large shape, which is evil, has good in it. So everything that is evil has a little bit of good. And then everything that is good has a little bit of evil in it. Um, so it's kind of a, a balance in the way they kind of intermix. Um, that's kind of the thought behind it. Um, it's kind of a fun symbol um, to, to think about. So I have that. Now I'm going to take my white. I'm going to go back with my blue again. Here's my black. I do need a sharp one on this one. So let me go in. I'm 
Okay, so I have the sharp. On the other side here. I apologize, I forgot to do this. Okay, I'm gonna go back in with my red and I wanna go in, cause I wanna get a dark red. And I kinda go in and I just barely kiss the edge of that black. And you have this beautiful, nice deep red. So I just do these little motions, these circle motions. And you would do the same thing on the other side. Just make sure you, again, you blend those nice and good. And this section is done. I'm not gonna do this in front of you, but you're gonna do this one too. It says use blues and greens um, to color this section. <coughs> the, the circle inside should be red, okay? So you're gonna use a blue, use a green, work on those transitions. It's not two primaries, you get a secondary, this, is, this time it's a primary and a secondary. Um, but you should still have those transitions and the inside should be red with a white center. Okay, so this is, needs to be done. Um, and this is your rubric. It tells you what you're being graded on. So the answers to these questions should be five points and your drawing sample, which is this, um, should also be five points or 10% of your grade. So, so do a good job on it. Excellent.